Doc Talk is brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, Sure Trace Mineral Supplementation by Timed Injection. Hi there and welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University and we're really excited about today's show. Glad you joined us. I'm going to be joined by Dr. Bob Larson who's a professor in clinical sciences and we're going to talk about vaccinations and vaccination programs for protecting your cow herd. Stay tuned. We've been using Multiman for about seven years. Uh, it's one of the most multi-use products that we have here on the farm. Bulls, cows, calves, weaning age cattle, just about everything on the place. If they go through the chute, they get a shot of it. The primary use that we started Multiman was on our, in our donor program, and our embryo transplant program. I'd recommend Multiman to any, any producer in the cattle business. Here at Deer Valley, every animal that goes through the chute gets a dose of Multiman. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Normycin LA, Normectrum Plus, 1%, and Poron, the practical choice for your herd. Hi there, and welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. I'm joined by friend and colleague, Dr. Bob Larson. Welcome to the show. Good, good to be here, Dan. And Dr. Larson is the Coleman Chair, and he is a professor in the Department of Clinical Sciences here at the College of Veterinary Medicine at Kansas State University. And, and Bob, you've done a lot of things with, with beef herds throughout your life, and, and whether it's in private practice or extension or, or through your research, vaccines tend to continuously come up in conversation. That's exactly right. I, we often think of veterinarians as being involved in, in treating sick animals, diagnosing disease and those kinds of things, and that, that's an important role for veterinarians. But another, another very important role is, is to prevent disease. You bet. And there's several things that fall into that category of preventing disease. We talk about biosecurity, biocontainment to, to prevent the introduction and spread of disease. And vaccinations play a key role in that biosecurity or, or minimizing the effects of disease. So when we think of vaccinations, there's really several things to think about. Yep. The, the area we live in, what are the disease risks that our cattle are really facing, and then which diseases do we have vaccines available to to use? Because there's a lot of diseases that aren't there aren't effective vaccine vaccines available. Um, so all of that type of thinking involves a close relationship between the veterinarian and producer to really think through what what their goals are and what kind of a situation that they are placed in. You know, some of the things to think about is is just the disease risk, the chance to be exposed to viruses or bacteria that can cause disease, that's going to be different depending on if the herd is open, they buy a lot of replacements, uh, they buy stalker cattle and graze those next to the, the pregnant cow herd, or a herd that's very, very closed, uh, fairly isolated, not a lot of neighbors, maybe just cropland as, as neighboring uh, pro property. Um, in that type of a situation, the disease risk is going to be much less. Right. And those are the things we have to think about as you plan a, a vaccination protocol. We, we had a, a show when we discussed uh, with equine practitioners about the difference between, you know, core vaccines and risk-based vaccine decisions. And what you're saying is, is there are those core vaccines that, that we're going to use in, in our cow herd because it's indigenous around right. the country. But then there's the risk base based on production and working with that veterinarian is hugely important. That's exactly right. Um, so I think that's a good way to think about it. There's, there's certain diseases that we're probably going to use in or vaccines in almost every herd. Um, an example might be our clostridial or black leg type vaccines. That's a germ that lives in the soil. It's present really throughout the United States and anywhere you'd go. So we'd take a core vaccine like that and then adjust what a particular herd needs based on what they, uh, what their risk level is. Great introduction, great start. Thanks for being here. Thank you for being here. And when we come back from the break, we're gonna continue our discussion with Dr. Bob Larson on vaccination protocols for the cow herd. Thanks for joining us. There's something wrong. His head is down. He's clearly stressed. He's worried sick about BRD. That's why there's prescription Zactran for BRD treatment and control in high-risk cattle. Get a rapid response plus 10-day treatment and control in a single dose so you can stop worrying and get back to business. 
For use in cattle only, do not treat cattle within 35 days of slaughter. Because a discard time in milk has not been established, do not use in female dairy cattle 20 months of age or older or in calves to be processed for veal. The effects of Zactran on bovine reproductive performance, pregnancy, and lactation have not been determined. Don't worry yourself sick. Talk to your veterinarian about a real alternative for BRD treatment and control. Because it's critical, it's Zactran. From Mariel, a leading animal health company. Got cattle? Rotomix manufactures a complete line of energy-efficient rotary and vertical feed mixers for feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow-calf operations. Our mixers are available with the patented Generation 2 Staggered Rotor, the industry standard for feeding wet rations that include wet distiller's grain. Made in the USA, Rotomix mixers are designed for feeding performance that American cattlemen and dairy producers have come to expect. Rotomix, proud to offer a better mix in less time using less fuel. Beef producers need a practical choice when antibiotic therapy is required. More than ever, they are reaching for non-prescription Noromycin 300 LA from Norbrook. Specially formulated to produce sustained antibiotic blood levels up to four days in cattle, Noromycin 300 LA delivers economic, broad-spectrum disease management for pneumonia, shipping fever, pink eye, wound infections, and foot rot. See for yourself why Norbrook's Noromycin 300 LA is the practical choice for your herd. This segment was brought to you by Brute Cattle Equipment, makers of the Brute Stealth Hydraulic Chute. If the chute fits, swear by it. Visit our website for more information. Hi there and welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine. I'm joined by Dr. Bob Larson, who is a veterinarian uh, in the College of Veterinary Medicine, but he is the Coleman Chair and Professor of Clinical Sciences. And, and we're talking about vaccines, gave a great introduction as to to the vaccines. Now, the, one of the questions I got in practice and, and what makes a successful vaccination? Well, it, that's a, that is a good question because it's easy to start wanting our vaccines to do more than they can. Right. We, we would like it if I could use a bottle to solve all problems and prevent <laughs> all health problems. Yeah. Uh, we know that as, as humans, human health. The silver and, bullet. And animal health, it doesn't work that way. Right. Um, Vaccines have been a great tool. I mean, you look through the throughout history, you know, starting with some of the early livestock and human vaccines, what a difference they've made in in health and longevity. So they're a great tool, but they're only that, they're only a tool. So that for a vaccine program to really work, I have to administer it in, into cattle that have the ability to build a good, strong immune response right. to that vaccine and then be able to fight off disease. And then I have to do other things, primarily sanitation and, and maybe some, the, the kind of the housing of animals, where we put them and who we put them against to decrease the, the level of exposure. So if I can increase the immunity and decrease the level of exposure, I can, I can greatly improve the health of a, of a population of cattle. So when I say, uh, you know, the ideal candidate to vaccinate, right. first of all, th they need to be, uh, you know, well, well fed. The nutrition has to be uh, very good. Uh, when we ask an animal to build an immune response, that uses proteins to build those, uh, those immune bodies sure. to fight disease. Uh, the animal is not going to respond well if they're short of energy, if they're short of protein, or some of our key minerals and vitamins. So... I need the, the diet to be in excellent. I need the diet to be excellent so that the animal can respond to the vaccine. I need my animals to be relatively free of stress in that uh, my housing has to be good. The, the, you know, I, I don't like to vaccinate when the weather is really inclement. It's really a problem because they're not gonna respond as well right. to that vaccine. And so I, I need my animals to be in a good plane of nutrition uh, the housing and the environment to be good so that they're not under a lot of stress. And then I want to make sure that I'm timing my vaccines ahead of my disease challenges or when I'm concerned about disease. Because when we talk about vaccination and the immune response, that takes some time. That doesn't happen immediately after the injection. So I want to, again, kind of knowing the herd, knowing when exposures might occur, try to get my vaccines into those animals at a time, uh, you know, several weeks ahead of when I'm most concerned about problems occurring. If I can do all of those things, so I've got a good environment, got a good diet, and I add uh, effective vaccines at the right timing, then I can really Im impact uh, health in a, in a positive way. 
and, uh, animal handling, of course, as well, decreases stress if we if we do that in a low stress manner. Absolutely, everything we can do to make to make everything about the herd running well. Great information. Start with that healthy animal when you vaccinate. We'll be back after the break to discuss more about vaccinations in the cow herd with Dr. Bob Larson. Thanks for joining us. This tip brought to you by Batrol 100 Enrofloxacin Injectable, now approved for use in controlling BRD in high-risk cattle. Batrol 100, right the first time, whether it's controlling BRD in high-risk cattle or treating BRD. Hi folks, it's Dr. Dan from Doc Talk. Thanks for joining me for today's On the Farm Tip. We're gonna talk about extra label drug usage. Labeled drug usage is when I pick up the bottle, there's a label on it. And when I look at the label, it's gonna tell me how much to give, how often, and the route of administration. Route of administration might be sub-Q, IM, or, or intravenous. Now, anytime you change the route of administration, or if you change the dosage, or you change the time in which you give those drugs, that's called extra label drug usage. We can't do that without the written consent of a veterinarian. So we need to follow label directions. If we don't follow label directions, we can wind up with antibiotic residues in the meat. And so when we do an extra label drug usage, we need the veterinarian involved. Thanks for watching today's On the Farm Tip. I'm Dr. Dan and I'll see you down the road. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Hi, I'm Kevin Oxner, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen and Colorado Rancher. Join me each week as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Paxter Black. Join me for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern, right here on RFD TV. Here in Dallas, we're proud that our vehicles use an advanced biofuel called biodiesel. It's made from renewable resources like soybean oil, canola oil, even recycled cooking oil. This year, biodiesel will displace almost a billion gallons of fossil fuel nationwide. Our air is cleaner, our economy is stronger, and America's more energy independent. It's working here, it can work in your community. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. Got cattle? Rotomix manufactures a complete line of energy efficient rotary and vertical feed mixers for feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow calf operations. Our mixers are available with the patented Generation 2 Staggered Rotor, the industry standard for feeding wet rations that include wet distiller's grain. Made in the USA, Rotomix mixers are designed for feeding performance that American cattlemen and dairy producers have come to expect. Rotomix, proud to offer a better mix in less time using less fuel. This segment is brought to you by Double D Family Mat Shop. Injured livestock could mean injured profits. Protect yours with no-slip mats from Double D Family Mat Shop. Hi there and welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, joined by Dr. Bob Larson. We're both from the College of Veterinary Medicine here at Kansas State University. And Dr. Larson is the Coleman Chair of Production Medicine and a Professor of Clinical Sciences. And we're discussing vaccination programs um, in cow herds and so let's get into the kind of start to tiptoe into the weeds here and, yeah. and get down to the witch calves and cows and bulls and, and all that and where do you want to start well let's let's think about kind of the three groups of animals that might be on a ranch that we're going to talk about vaccinating okay. i'm going to start with kind of my young animals so up to the time that they are weaned six months of age something like that my adult cows my adult females you bet. and my adult males uh, so I'm going to kind of divide it in those ways. When I'm looking at young calves, so you're talking about calves from the time they're born until their time they're weaned, there's a, a couple of diseases that I'm particularly concerned about. One is, and I mentioned it earlier, black leg or the clostridial diseases. Those are diseases where the germ that causes that is actually in the soil. It's commonly present in the soil. So a vaccine program to raise the immunity and to help protect those calves uh, is, is important. We try to get that vaccine into those calves relatively early, far, bef far ahead of weaning if possible. So two months of age, three months of age, something like that. If we can get that into the calves at that time, that really helps. Now we're gonna booster that black leg or clostridial vaccine later in life as well, 
uh, but we want to start that fairly young. Yep. Then as those calves get closer to weaning age, I start to want to prepare those calves for time after it's away from mama. Yep. So the biggest disease we're concerned in, in that stage of life is respiratory disease or pneumonia. And so at some point while that calf is still on the cow or right up to the time of weaning, I'm going to try to get some doses of uh, viral respiratory vaccine into yep. those calves and possibly even bacterial vaccines trying to prevent the, the germs that cause uh, pneumonia in those calves right post weaning. So if I can do that in those calves, I can have a calf that's a lot more likely to be strong and healthy and, and, and take off right after weaning. Or it goes back to getting that vaccine into the, the animal prior to exposure. Exactly. If I can do that before the, the really high risk time uh, yep. occurs, then, then I should have good success. How about those adult females? Adult females, I'm not as concerned about respiratory disease. Right. There are some areas of the country where I'm still concerned about some of the black leg type diseases. So I'll probably include that in most cow herd vaccines. But what I'm concerned about in cows is some of the diseases that will cause abortion. Uh, we have a number of diseases that cause abortion in cows. So I get her pregnant, but then she doesn't carry it all the way through pregnancy. Um, so in order to do that, I'm going to use, and again, some of the same viruses that cause respiratory disease also cause abortion. Right. So my best timing, if I can accomplish it, is to actually get uh, vaccines into the cows ahead of the breeding season. Right. So between the time she calves and the time she calves or in, and she breeds, I'll try to get uh, a vaccine into her at that time. Some vaccines are labeled to be given during pregnancy and I can make that work as well, but I'm really focusing on those diseases that cause abortion. Perfect. When uh, We're going to take a break. When we come back from the break, we'll wrap up with the adult bulls, and then we'll go into some handling of vaccines. Yeah, that's an important area, too. Really glad you joined us today. Thanks. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you after the break discussing vaccines in the cowherds with Dr. Bob Larson. This segment is brought to you by Lalaman Animal Nutrition, dedicated to the development and production of natural and differential solutions for animal nutrition. This is Agriculture Today. A featured topic at a recent water conference co-sponsored by K-State was a new water use policy in Kansas, which allows local agencies to develop and implement water use guidelines tailored specifically for conservation in that area. Tracy Streeter of the Kansas Water Office discusses these locally enhanced management areas. A local enhanced management area is a, it's really kind of a, a locally led uh, regulatory effort at reducing water consumption and based on ideas and recommendations that come from the locals themselves. It's all about conserving and extending the life of the aquifer and still maintaining that economic viability that, that we have in Kansas agriculture over the Ogallala. This is K-State Research and Extension. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine is a leader in food animal research and education. Our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety. Through the Veterinary Health Center and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine, knowledge and service for the future of animal production. With BRD, every second counts. And when you get new high-risk cattle, you've got a choice to make. You can either take your chances and wait and see what happens, or you can take charge of BRD. Right from the start, treat bacteria up front with Batra 100 Enrofloxacin Injectable, now approved by the FDA for BRD metaphylaxis and high-risk cattle. Ask your veterinarian about Batra 100 and make it your go-to drug to control BRD and high-risk cattle or for treatment of BRD. Batra 100, right the first time. If our local animal agriculture industry disappeared, what else would disappear? The buses that get us to school? The playgrounds and ballparks we go to after school? The books and computers that help us learn and grow? Animal agriculture provides millions of dollars in tax revenue that pay for our school improvements, that pave the foundation that will build our future. A message from U.S. Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. Cow-calf, stalker, and feedlot producers know that effective parasite control improves overall herd performance and profitability. Norbrook offers a comprehensive, economical line of poron and injectable parasiticides for every livestock operation. Consult with your local animal health supplier. 
to set up a program that protects your investment and brings larger cattle checks this fall. See for yourself why the Nora Mecton line from Norbrook is the practical choice for your herd. This segment is brought to you by Rotomix, manufactured in the USA and designed for feeding performance in the feedlots, beef production, dairy, and cow-calf operations. Hi there and welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Bob Larson, who's the Coleman Chair of Production Medicine and a professor of clinical sciences at Kansas State University's uh, College of Veterinary Medicine, and we're talking about vaccinations. We left off with the cows, yes, and we're going to talk about the, the bulls, and when we talk about the repro antigens, what are the, the main things well, you're concerned about? The main diseases that we have good effective vaccines for are two viruses that cause abortions, IBR, and BVD, yep. as well as a couple of bacteria, lepto and vibrio. Those are the, the terms we typically use. Right. And, and so most cows are going to have an IBR, BVD, lepto and vibrio vaccine, uh, both as, as a heifer and then annually as a cow. In the heifers, it's important to booster? Very important. You know, it's, it's kind of like sending our kids to kindergarten. Uh, multiple vaccines when they're young to really set them up for a lifetime uh, good immunity. And then it's an annual. And then it's an annual booster after that. What about the bulls? The good news about bulls is what I, I think the easiest way to think about it is to, to vaccinate bulls with the same vaccines I'm using on my cows that are the same age. So when I've got young yearling bulls, I vaccinate them like young yearling replacement heifers. So they're going to get multiple doses of my IBR, BVD, Lepto, Vibrio. Yep headed into um, their their first breeding season, yep. and then annual boosters, just like the cows, then once they're an adult. Same antigens and pretty much Pretty same. much exactly the same. Well, I know that the, the other important factor in, in, in a good vaccination program is proper vaccination technique and storage, and, and I know you want to spend a little time talking about BQA principles. It, exactly. You know, if you spend the money to buy a product and you develop the plan when you know when you're going to vaccinate, it would be a shame to then have the vaccine not work very well. Right. And so things like most of our vaccines need to be refrigerated. So maintaining them at a proper temperature, don't let them get frozen, don't let them get hot. Uh, most of our vaccines are very sensitive to sunlight. So keep them in the shade. So while you're working with it, keep it in a cooler or someplace like that. It doesn't only keep it cool, but it keeps it out of the sunlight. Uh, the, vac or the, the syringes we use, um, need to be well maintained and you might have to buy a new one every once in a while just to have good quality equipment. The needles, uh, we use disposable needles and the current recommendation depends on the herd but generally no more than 10 head per needle and then switch needles. Some herds we switch it even more frequently than that. Right. So I want you know take care of my vaccines, the temperature control, keep them out of sunlight, uh, use good quality uh, syringes and change my needles frequently. Then the other thing is, you know, all of those vaccines come with a, an instruction sheet yep. and, no, and it, it's easy to not remember to read that, mm -hmm. but it is important to read that. And it'll give you some instructions on where to vaccinate. If the vaccine is labeled to give under the skin or sub-Q, under the skin and the neck. If it's labeled to give in the muscle, give it in the muscle, in the neck, never in the back leg, but follow those label instructions. Great. Great show today. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule and, and spending it with us here on the show. It's good to be here. Great. Thank you for watching Doc Talk. And remember, if you want to learn more about what Dr. Larson and I do here at the College of Veterinary Medicine, you can find us on the web at www.vet.ksu.edu. Remember to always work with your local, vac uh, local practitioner and veterinarian on these decisions. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here from the College of Veterinary Medicine. I'll see you down the road. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. DocTalk was brought to you by Multimin USA, manufacturers of Multimin 90, sure trace mineral supplementation by timed injection. We've been using the Multimin on our donor cows, and after we started using it on them, we've seen a definite increase in grade number one embryos. I like the results that I get using Multimin with the uh, AI conception rate. Their mineral's not up to snuff, you're gonna have problems, and I definitely think Multimin is good for, you know, general 
healthiness of the cattle. We think multi-men more than pays for itself. Mm -hmm.